Huh. You're not better. Even than if they me. gave you a million dollars. I wouldn't. Number one, if they gave me a million dollars, I wouldn't accept it. Get out of here. Tyler Perry. On, be, on behalf of the church? I wouldn't I wouldn't let the church accept it. Okay, Same okay. Time. Let's loo- use Oprah Winfrey and Denzel Washington. They're not cross dressing. Would you accept theirs? No. That's hard to believe. So Gino Jennings had this interview where he spilled some truths about these famous celebs and his strong beliefs in the work of God he's doing. I truly think this video is a must watch for all Christians since it brings up some unconventional truths that are crucial for our everyday life in today's world. How would you deal with, right? Because I hear you talking about Denzel Washington, Tyler Perry, Chris, all these guys, right? Mm -hmm. If they came to your church. If they come in, they would come like anybody else. Take a seat. And after service, when I'm done teaching, I get a chance to greet you. Would I give you special privileges? No. Huh. You're not better. Even if they gave you a million dollars. I went number one, if they gave me a million dollars, I wouldn't accept it. Get out of here. Tyler Perry. On behalf of the church? I wouldn't I wouldn't let the church accept it. The scripture says this he that gather riches and not by right dies a fool. If you a drug dealer. But 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 that's not by right. I mean, the man just I mean, he's not, I, I've never known them guys be drug dealers. I mean, they. I'm making, let me make an example. Okay, make an example. Because I got to hear this. you're a drug dealer. Right. And I know you're a drug dealer. And you come and give me a million dollars of drug money. I'm partaking in your evil deed. I can see that. And I'm strengthening the hands of an evil door. So I know that Tyler Perry was a cross dresser and probably still is. So if he give me a million dollars from indulging in cross dressing and uh, mimicking a woman whom the scripture says if a man put on a woman's apparel, it's an abomination. And then I accept that money. I'm endorsing what he's doing. So if I'm endorsing what he's doing, I can't preach against what he's doing and then accept money from him. Well, okay. All of my life, you know, my mother, she didn't have much to give me. She didn't have millions of dollars. She didn't have some legacy, but she had Jesus. And she taught me about that God. So I didn't even know that he was he was trying to build this youth center. I didn't even know it, but I know how important the youth are. So we were sitting in the service and I leaned up toward him and I said, I've just been touched to give a million dollars. So as... So when you got up here and you said a million dollars, I said, God, I don't know what you're doing, but I know I heard your voice. Hey! So God bless you, Bishop. I pray right now that you will continue to do everything you're doing. I pray his anointing will stay upon you. I pray the power of God all over you. I pray his favor. I pray the blood of Jesus will come upon you right now. Keep you in his hair. God, I thank you for your blessings. Okay, okay, God. let's lo- use Oprah Winfrey and Denzel Washington. They're not cross-dressing. Would you accept theirs? No. That's hard to believe. I mean, I believe you because you... If you cause, don't, if you don't... I've, I've if, talked if, to you a lot of times. The time. reason why I wouldn't accept a million dollars from Denzel Washington because of his Hollywood blaspheme against God. See, if, when you make movies and you're quoting a script, and if there's blasphemy in that script, a right. good example, when he did the movie of Malcolm X, yeah. directed by Spike Lee, yeah. there's a scene when he was in jail. Right. And he was saying, God ain't did nothing for me. Right. Well, they would say he's acting. The scripture says, by your words you're justified, hmm. and by thine words thou shalt be condemned. When he uh, commented about the movie with the gentleman that played the role of Black Panther, the last movie he did, Black Bottom, right. about this popular blues singer. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was about five or 10 to 15 minutes that they gave him. Right. Nothing but clear blaspheme. He cussed God and MF God and MF Jesus and everything. If these men or women gonna break biblical principle just for money, blaspheme God just for money, play with the Bible just for money, make mockery of scripture truth just for money, and I'm going to take that money. I'm just as much as a hypocrite as they are. So even if it's acting role, you can't separate. Oh, no, no. I will not separate scripture from reality. For really, the scripture is going to judge us and our entire life must evolve around scripture. 
Pastor Geno Jennings' stance is unwavering when it comes to the purity of contributions received by the church. He staunchly believes that money earned through means that involve cursing God or blaspheming sacred tenets should not be accepted by any spiritual institution. Jennings argues that to take such funds would be to implicitly condone the actions that generated them, thus betraying the very principles upon which the church stands. So what's your take on that? He also talks about how celebrities sometimes get special treatment in church, you know, like he's all about keeping it real and not letting any nonsense slide. He strongly emphasizes the equality of all individuals in the eyes of faith. His remarks indicate that he's really dedicated to the principles of his belief system. For him, spiritual integrity and the values of the congregation matter more than money and fame. These days, most pastors are all about collecting funds. They don't even care where the money comes from. They'll guilt trip you into giving away your hard earned savings. If we have 500 people give $10,000, we can raise the million in one day. Lord, I also break a stingy spirit because I sense that there's some heavy hitters watching me tonight. There's some people that can give 200,000, 300,000. They can give 50,000, 20,000. They had it saved up. But God, that's a stingy spirit on. That's a spirit of fear. So I break that spirit of stinginess. Some of you are just giving maybe a little money, $10 here, 20, when you know you have thousands of dollars. Don't be like that. Come on, tell me what you can give. You have money put away. You have money in accounts that you know you are sitting on. And it's not right that you come into a ministry like this and get the presence of God and the glory of God. And it's hard for God to get your natural things. You should be willing to give when you have finances. You have finances that you have to give, but you're holding it up. You will have it saved. You have it put away somewhere. God wants you to sow that right now. You have large amounts that you have in savings or annuities, or you probably have to go in a CD and break it, but God has given it to you. You need to sow it tonight, right now. And if you get offended because I'm asking for finances, then you have a devil in you. That's right, I said that. You have a devil in you. This is what you get in most churches every Sunday. It's gotten pretty fancy these days, I tell you. They need a whole lot of money to keep up with the maintenance. Pastors will go to great lengths to get you to open up your wallet. But you know what? The original church that Jesus and the apostles started was nothing like this. It was simple and down to earth. In fact, they used to meet up at people's homes a lot without all the fancy stage lights and expensive stage setups. Churches have become a lot more commercialized with pastors becoming celebrities in their own right. Some even sell merchandise and have lucrative contracts with media outlets. But Pastor Geno Jennings is not one to be swayed by the allure of fame and fortune. He believes that the true purpose of the church is to spread the word of God and serve as a beacon of moral guidance, not to become a lucrative enterprise. True prosperity is not houses, it's not land, it's not money. That's right. True prosperity is the wisdom and knowledge and understanding of who God is. That's right. Any preacher and every preacher that is on television or radio or social media preaching prosperity, he is a servant of the devil. They speak a vision of their own that heart. That include T.D. Jakes, Benny Hinn, Creflo O'Dollar, Joel Austin, and anybody else. That's right. They are servants of the devil. Of the devil, amen. Jesus said the poor you will have with you always. always. You should never have to pay the common God house. No way. And you should never have to pay a preacher to preach in God house. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. These churches have gotten really big and are racking up a ton of expenses. So they'll take money from anyone, no matter their ideology. And you know what? That's one of the reasons why most pastors don't want to speak out against immoral behaviors. They're afraid their next paycheck might come from those guys. Accepting funds from ill-gotten wealth can create a complex moral dilemma for church leaders. 
While the immediate influx of funds can be seen as a way to do good, supporting community programs, helping the less fortunate, and sustaining church operations, it can also compromise the integrity of the religious institution. There's a risk that accepting such funds could indirectly endorse the questionable means used to acquire them, potentially damaging the reputation and trust of the congregation. So I agree with Geno Jennings. Churches should really be careful about who they take money from and how they do it. That's a wrap for today's video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss out when I drop fresh content. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.